Hello there, Richard from Digital Foundry here with a look at performance and settings tweaks for Star Wars Battlefront, this time covering medium and high-end graphics cards. In this video we'll be looking at the GTX 960 and its R9 380 competitor, along with the GTX 970 and R9 290X. With all of these GPUs, we can seriously up the eye candy here at 1080p, though it is fair to say that in this performance tier, AMD has a clear advantage over Nvidia. Let's begin with the less capable graphics cards, the GTX 960 and R9 380. Here we're running with a hybrid of ultra and high settings. Everything is ramped up to the max, aside from the really draining presets. Specifically, we're talking about shadows, effects work, and ambient occlusion. We drop these down from ultra to high, but everything else is left at the max. The end result is straightforward enough. On the R9 380 at least, you get frame rates that stay well north of 60 FPS, even in effects heavy scenes. And in the areas where we have dropped quality presets, the difference visually isn't immediately obvious. The game still looks fantastic. Performance wise, in a comparison of the pre-scripted cinematics that precede every level, the AMD card ends up with an 11% advantage. Now that's pretty good, but it's also worth bearing in mind that our GTX 960 here is an MSI Gaming 2G model, which already has a fairly decent factory overclock in place too. The deficit in performance has an impact during the Tatooine survival mission. Chosen as the intense blaster fire in the initial shootouts can cause challenges to the engine that are just as problematic, if not more so, than the multiplayer levels we had access to in the beta. What becomes clear is that while our chosen settings keep the R9 380 above that all-important 60fps threshold, the GTX 960 falls short, and either dropping back on settings like effects and shadows is required, or else tweaking the resolution scaler. We see a similar gap in performance as we scale up to the GTX 970 and the Radeon R9 290X. Unfortunately, AMD couldn't supply a 390, but even the 200 series card offers a clear leap compared to the Nvidia equivalent. Here we have so much overhead available at 1080p that we simply scale up everything to ultra and see what happens. In the event the 290X has a 10% performance advantage in the like-for-like -like pre-scripted benchmarks, hitting an average of 94 FPS compared to 85 FPS of the GTX 970. In the effects heavy Tatooine survival challenge, the increased performance of the 290X remains in full effect, but crucially both cards keep us north of 60 FPS, even under the most intense load. In short, with these two GPUs we're effectively maxed at 1080p. We can sustain the resolution, the full complement of effects, and we can lock effortlessly to the 60Hz refresh of the standard 1080p display, and in our view that's the optimal way to play on that level of display. Which begs the question, can we push further on this hardware up to 1440p? Well, we can state for the record that fully maxed, not even the GTX 980 can sustain all ultra settings at this resolution, and neither can the 290X. You'll need the Fury X and the GTX 980 Ti to get the job done there, and that's something we'll explore in another video. But here's the thing, the same small compromises we made to get excellent 1080p performance on the R9 380, we can apply here at 1440p to the higher end cards, and we get equivalent boosts of frame rate. Now, as you can see on these pre-scripted sequences though, the advantage of the 290X is actually increased substantially compared to the GTX 970. The benchmarks here see the 970 slip well below the 60fps threshold, and there's no overhead left for more effects heavy gameplay. Meanwhile the 290X storms ahead and by the end of the benchmark run it has amassed a colossal 23% aggregate lead. Moving into the Tatooine gameplay test, the golf in performance is clear to see, with 290X sticking well north of our 60fps threshold, while the GTX 970 drops beneath, requiring an overclock to get back into the game. Overall then, if you're looking to upgrade your PC GPU to enjoy Battlefront 1080p gameplay at the top end, both the R9 380 and the 290X are great buys, outperforming their Nvidia counterparts significantly. The 290X is being discontinued, but both 390 and 390X should offer ballpark performance, as both typically benchmark ahead of the older 290X. So that's where we're at for now. Stick around to see full unedited benchmark runs for everything covered in this video, and look out for more Battlefront PC performance analysis and settings tweaks. We've already got the budget cards covered elsewhere on the channel, and we'll be looking at GTX 980 Ti and Fury X performance real soon. But anyway, that's all we've got for now. Please do give us a like if this was useful, and subscribe to Digital Foundry to make sure you don't miss a thing. See you soon, and thanks for watching. Not my best landing. Hey, let's go!
not my best landing. Hey, let's go! Not my best landing. 